I love zombies and I really love dioramas and I think it's about time that I combine those two things. Hey guys, welcome back to Black Magic Craft. So I really love zombies and not this kind of mundane, tired, soulless, overdone, crappy zombie stuff that's come out over the past 20 years. Walking Dead, you just about ruined zombies forever. No, I'm talking about the zombie flicks from the 70s and 80s when they had soul and amazing aesthetics. I'm talking about the zombie movies from the masters like Fulci and Romero. I'm talking about zombies like Tar Man from Return of the Living Dead when they had some humor and some coolness and a nice vibe and just I've wanted to channel this love into a diorama for quite some time. So when Loot contacted me and asked me to do another sponsored video and they told me that their theme for July was graveyards and they had a bunch of models for zombies and whites and ghouls and skeletons and stuff like that, I said, ah! yes. I actually rearranged my entire production schedule to make this happen because I wanted to do it so badly. And it didn't all go according to plans. There were some setbacks along the way that really slowed down the process. And as you can see, Zombie Man over here is yet to be painted as a result, but that's okay. Now I'll be able to spend a whole episode next week really focusing on him and making him look good so that I can place him in this little diorama that I'm super proud of. To begin with, I browsed through some of the models that Loot had ready for the July bundle. And I landed on this guy. I liked him because he had that iconic classic zombie look and wasn't tied to any particular time period or setting. It was time to put on my big boy pants and try doing my first project at 75 millimeter scale. I printed out the main zombie model as well as a few other bits available in this month's bundle. Unsure of what I would end up using, but I wanted to have lots of options. I spent a fair bit of time playing around with the pieces and planning a layout. I knew from the beginning I wanted an open grave, so I started planning with that in mind. One challenge was this cool hand model. I really liked it and I wanted to use it, but it was awkward no matter where I put it. If I put it in the back, it would draw attention away from the main model, and if I placed it in the front, well, it would look like it was grabbing for Zombie Man's crotch. And I had to place it somewhere that would actually make sense in relation to the graves. This diorama has a big open grave on it with a tombstone, so subconsciously it wouldn't really make sense if I put it too close. I thought maybe I could place him behind where the next grave could conceivably be, but this would later get scrapped. I also ditched most of the other pieces and stuck with just the shovel and the headstone. Any more than that I thought would be too much and just get too distracting. Once I had my layout sorted, I cut a piece of half inch thick MDF to act as a really strong base. I attached it to some really thick foam and cut off the excess. Because I wanted to create an open grave effect, the base of this piece needed to be very thick. My hope was that this would create a really stunning cutaway effect, and to pull it off, I needed really tall material. I immediately regretted attaching the foam to the base though, as it made cutting away the grave section much more difficult than it would have been if it wasn't attached. Using the hot wire to cut this out would have been way better, but since it didn't have to be pretty, I was able to just hack it away with a knife. So many times I've gotten to a point in a diorama where I wish that the sides were nicer, more durable, more smooth. So on this one, I decided to go all out and completely box it in with MDF, which in retrospect meant I could have used much cheaper foam than the good stuff. The next day I removed the comical amount of clamps and sanded all the joints. I'm gonna say right now, there are several points in this project where I was doing things that required PPE. And rest assured, I was wearing it. Whenever I'm doing something dusty, I'm wearing a face mask. Whenever I'm doing anything that makes dust or particles or whatever go flying, I'm wearing glasses. And usually if I'm making dust, I have a vacuum set up right there, sucking it all in because I don't want dust going everywhere. And even at that, I usually only sand things for a brief moment inside to get it on film. And then I go outside to do the rest of it. So please, no nanny comments about 
safety gear. I'm wearing it. I'm not an idiot. The grave needed to look like it was dug out with a shovel and not perfectly done with some kind of machinery, so this rectangle wouldn't work. I had to cut away some of the front MDF to widen the hole. Now, thankfully, I did have a cutting bit for my rotary tool and I was able to do this fairly easily. I wanted the shovel to be placed pretty close to the tombstone, but the larger bases included on them wouldn't allow for this. These pieces are clearly designed to be used as standalone bits of scatter or terrain, so they have nice chunky decorative bases. But I needed to remove some of them to make this work. And while I cut through the bases, I want to take a minute to tell you more about the sponsor of this week's video and the maker of these awesome models. Loot is a company that creates very detailed miniature STL files for 3D printing at home. By joining as a monthly member, you get access to a different set of heroes, monsters, and scenery every month. And this month's theme is all about the graveyard. Zombies, whites, skeletons, ghouls, and all sorts of cool cemetery scatter terrain. The models are all supplied as pre-supported files ready to print, making for a really convenient and easy experience. They also provide files for both 32mm gaming and 75 millimeter scale for display painting. You could use this month's bundle to print out a horde of enemies for your tabletop RPG game, or maybe an undead warband for some sort of skirmish game. Or you could select your favorite model or two and print them out in a ready to use 75 millimeter scale and make a more involved diorama like I decided to do. Or you could just do both. The monthly fee is only 15 bucks and you get a ton of value out of it. In addition to the themed bundle every month, on your first month you also get a huge welcome pack that is full of awesome tavern themed miniatures. Each month brings a cool theme to the table. Last month it was goblins, this month it is undead, and well, next month, who knows, but I'm sure it's gonna be something cool. They're a wonderful company and it's an absolute pleasure to work with their models. They always inspire me to make something really, really cool. So thank you, Loot, for sponsoring this video. Now, back to the build. With those chunky bases sorted, I could start adding all the ground covering and texture using sculpt mold I was getting really close to being out of sculpt mold and Amazon is sold out of it right now, so I was pretty nervous that I wouldn't have enough to do everything I wanted. After leaving the sculpt mold to stiffen up a bit, I smoothed out the surface to look more like mud or earth. And using a popsicle stick, I made some indents to imply shovel marks on the side of the grave. This would just be a little subtle thing that maybe most people wouldn't notice, but my hope was that it would really help tell the story. And speaking of telling the story, using the zombie model, I added some indented footprints coming from the hole. And using that little hand model, I made some claw marks on the edge to show some evidence of the undead creature crawling up and out of his grave. I realized that if this grave had just been dug out, there should surely be a big pile of earth nearby. So I mixed up my last bit of sculpt mold and started to shape a big pile behind the tombstone. I needed to make the edges nice and flat to help with that cutaway look. This was a little bit tricky, but I managed to get it pretty decent without too much trouble. Once that was dry, I did need to smooth out the sides where there was the sculpt mold that, you know, it wasn't perfect, and I needed to hide the seams in the MDF. So I mixed up some quickset drywall joint compound and applied it to all the surfaces. While that dried, I started preparing some coffee stir sticks to make a coffin. Funnily enough, in this month's bundle, Loot actually does include a coffin model that would have worked perfectly for this task, but at the time that I made this, they hadn't yet finalized all of the files. No worries though, hand making this coffin was actually a pretty fun part of this build. But mistakes were made, and I applied my sticks to the template on the wrong face, making the shape and layout upside down and unusable. Oh well, uh, that was a practice round, we'll say. I immediately made a corrected version.
I also made a coffin lid that I could place on the ground above the grave. I decided to experiment a bit and try cutting away a cross using my rotary tool and a knife. This was a nice exercise in patience and care, but one that paid off and I'm really glad I tried it. Now looking at the cutaway view, I knew something wasn't quite right. I really wanted it to look like some of the loose dirt had tumbled back into the open coffin. So I needed to build up a pile. I was out of sculpt mold, so I turned to modeling paste. I also used some of it to build up another pile behind the tombstone and used it to attach my coffin lid to the ground. Now this is where the trouble started. The next day, after that was all dried, I took it outside and used an orbital sander to sand and smooth all the edges. And this mostly worked. Unfortunately, 24 hours later and the chunk of modeling paste wasn't actually dry or well bonded and it fell off. But I was determined to have that detail in place. And I also needed it ready to sand as soon as possible. I debated my options and the best thing I had on hand was Milliput. This wouldn't cure to a point of being ready to sand as fast as I would like, but I was confident that it would dry really hard and stick really well. So I built up the area again and sadly waited another 24 hours, essentially losing a full day of work as I couldn't proceed from this point. The next day it was nice and hard and I was able to sand it all smooth. I excitedly moved on to spray priming the piece. But the trouble with the outside of this thing continued. The primer highlighted some spots that weren't sanded well enough, or that had small holes that needed filling. Not the end of the world, just frustrating. I filled them in with more joint compound and waited, but that meant more lost time. When it was dry, I sanded it again and I primed it again. This time it looked way better and I moved on to painting the base with a high gloss black. My idea was to make the outside of this a really nice glossy piano finish. I wanted to paint it all out, let it cure for a day, and then mask it all off with tape before continuing the piece. The dream was that at the end I'd peel away the tape to reveal this beautiful finished border on the diorama. I even sanded it with 400 grit between coats to get everything perfectly smooth with no dust or debris. When I left the last coat to dry late in the evening it looked perfect and I went to sleep happy. But when I went down to start work the next day, I was crushed to see that suddenly it looked terrible. The areas of sculpt mold and milliput suddenly had horrible visible lines and weren't flush with the MDF. This was not the case the night before. I can only theorize that overnight those materials cured a little bit more and very slightly shrunk, causing these lips. It was crushing. I knew I had to fill them and paint the whole thing again which would cause me to now be two full days behind on this project. Because the surface was so glossy, I had to scuff it all up, prime it again with flat paint, then fill it, then sand it, then prime it again. By this point, I did not have the heart to lose a third day getting that piano finish back. So I gave in and decided it would just have to be flat black brush on paint to finish it at the end. And I moved on to painting. There really wasn't much actual painting to be done on this piece. I highlighted the few elements with white, then I used some brown ink to paint the wood, and some black and green washes for the tombstone. A little metallic on the shovel and that was really it. It's funny that I spent basically two full days getting the black exterior painted and only maybe 20 minutes painting the actual models, but such is life. I also remembered at this point that there was a little skull at the base of the tombstone, so I quickly painted that out with a comically large brush, just in case it ended up visible in the end, which sort of did, but not really. In the end, it just kind of looked like a big rock because I'd covered so much of its face. Now the dirt. For the first time ever, I decided to use real earth that I collected for flocking. My hope was that this would create a very realistic look. Before using it, I dried and sterilized it in the oven for two hours at 100 degrees Celsius. Now to apply it, I used watered down Mod Podge and just sprinkled it on. The trick to getting this very fine material to actually stay in place and be durable is to saturate it in watered down glue or scenic cement or Mod Podge. To ensure that it really soaks in, you have to first spray it with alcohol. This will quickly absorb into the material. Then when you spray on your glue, it will actually seep into it evenly through capillary action and create a super strong bond. If you don't spray the alcohol first, 
It just sits on top and pools and doesn't really work. I want to share with you a tip, okay? I got a bottle here of IPA alcohol that I can spray on first. And I have a bottle of the Scenic Cement or Watered Down Mod Podge, which I also want to spray on. I have ruined so many of these spray bottle tips doing this. Every single time I've ever done it, when I go back the next time, the tip is obviously clogged with glue. I think I finally came up with a solution. At my particular Dollarama, you can get these travel sets. They have three bottles. Who cares about this pump one? It has one of these atomizing spray bottles as well as one with just a pour spout lid. Fill one with the Mod Podge and one with H2O, just regular water. Keep the sprayer on the water bottle and this other lid on the glue. You switch the lids when you want to spray glue. And as soon as you're done, you switch the lids back, put the sprayer on the water and spray through some water until it's clean and put it away like that. This way you have a clean tip and I, assumedly a little great set that you can use for quite some time before you wreck it. I'm pretty happy about this. Since this was the first time that I'd done this, I had no idea if the dirt would stay looking like a dark black mud or return to its more natural brown-like color as the glue dried. I was content with it going either way though. Both would look good and one would just look like a rainy day whereas the other would look like it wasn't a rainy day. This is a rare situation where I was venturing into the unknown and the results would be good no matter which way they turned out. One fun detail is that I placed some of those little roots that I mentioned earlier in the sides of the hole. It's pretty rare that you dig a hole and don't have some random roots popping out. And I felt like this little added detail was probably the best little element on the whole build. And I'm super glad that I did this. In the end, the dirt did all return to its normal looking dry color, which honestly surprised me. But again, I was okay with this. I liked the fact that some of the black painted sculpta mold was still showing through, especially on the sides of the grave, as it gave a nice effect of soil mixed with a denser mud or clay deeper down. I really struggled with whether or not I should add any grass tufts. I even briefly considered adding snow. And I think it all would have looked good, but I was so happy with it the way that it was that I really didn't want to cover up too much of it. In the end, I decided on just adding a little bit of plant life around the headstone and on one back corner. I like the idea of adding some nice flowers to create a bit of juxtaposition on this grim scene. But in order for these elements to be more subtle and to really imply that this hole had just been dug up, I covered all the plant life with more dirt. I wanted it to look like the gravedigger had just tossed it everywhere willy-nilly with no care for these little flowers. And because the cutaway effect was so important to me, I even made sure to give the grass a little haircut on the edges before finishing things off with one more coat of black paint. And since a lot of love was going into this piece, I even wanted the underside to look decent. I used some spray adhesive to mount some black construction paper to the bottom. Oh, and that cool little hand model, it didn't go to waste. I decided to paint it up and flock it while I waited for other things to dry. It was my brother-in-law's birthday in a few days and I thought this would make a nice little gift for him to put on display with all his other quirky and creepy little knickknacks in his tattoo shop. So this project has turned from a week long project into a two week project. And that's okay. Thankfully, it's something I'm enjoying working on quite a bit. This is really more of a passion project for me, so I'm okay with spending more time on it. A lot of my effort went into elements that aren't that obvious, like the edges and the cutaway effect. But to me, those elements are really important. They're a part of diorama building that I really love. It's one of the things that I'm always drawn to when looking at other people's work. So I'm glad that I took some time on them. Honestly, I do wish I could have taken more time to really get them perfect, Maybe on the next one I can, and with some of the knowledge I gained on this trial run, it should be a lot easier and go a lot more smoothly. And that's it. For now. Next week, I'm going to be able to spend my whole time on this little zombie dude here, painting him up really nice, maybe adding some nice effects, and uh, putting him permanently in his home. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, hit the like button and let me know in the comments section below. Of course, if you want to get your hands on some of the really cool models from Loot, 
get those zombies, get those skeletons, get those whites, check out Loot. I'll put a link in the video description below where you can sign up for their sweet service. Thanks again for sponsoring this video. And if you need to pick up any tools or supplies for your own zombie diorama or whatever you're making, uh, check out blackmagiccraft.ca. If there's something I use that you're wondering what it is or where I get it or what it's called or what it's for, that's what that website's for. I list all the stuff that I use regularly, I explain it, and I link to it so you can buy it yourself. And if you really enjoy these videos that I make each and every week, if you get some real tangible value out of them and you want to help me keep making them, the best way you can do that is by supporting the channel on Patreon. That support is crucial and it means a lot to me and I'm really thankful for all the support I get there. But if you want to join up, join the Black Magic Craft Fellowship, join the Discord server, see these videos early, and just help me help you, Patreon. It's the best way to do it. That's it for this week, guys. Cheers. I'll see you again next week.